This is the overall view of the Milky Way galaxy. The bright central region is the bulge, which contains about one quarter of the galaxy's total matter. The entire galaxy rotates around this bulge. Here is the location of the solar system. Let's zoom in on it. The solar system takes about 250 million years to make one orbit around the galaxy. This is the image of a galaxy that most people typically imagine. However, the Milky Way has other structures as well. For example, globular clusters. Globular clusters are distributed in a way that surrounds the galaxy. And in fact, this structure holds the key to understanding the origin and growth of the Milky Way. So, how was the Milky Way born, and how did it take on its present form? And what happens when galaxies collide? The universe was born 13.8 billion years ago. It began from a state of infinite density. This was the Big Bang. Immediately after its birth, the size of the observable universe was at the scale of the Planck length. The Planck length is an ultra-microscopic limit scale that modern physics finds extremely difficult to describe. The universe was unimaginably dense, but quantum fluctuations already existed there. About 10 to the power of minus 36 seconds after the birth of the universe, space suddenly began to expand. This was inflation. As the name suggests, the rate of expansion was tremendous. In just an instant, between 10 to the power of minus 36 and 10 to the power of minus 32 seconds, the size of the observable universe increased by a factor of 10 to the power of 26. Because the expansion was so rapid, quantum fluctuations were stretched out, creating irregularities in the distribution of dark matter. The universe cooled as it expanded. As a result, matter that had been in a plasma state turned into gas. That gas fell into the gravitational wells created by dark matter and began to clump together. Once gas started to gather, gravity increased even more, and the structures grew larger and larger. In this way, the very first stars in the universe were born. Looking at larger regions, there were also massive clumps of dark matter. These are called dark matter halos. The gravity of dark matter halos pulled in stars and gas. Thus, giant galaxies were formed. Now, let's take a look at what an early galaxy actually looked like. This is a galaxy as it appeared 13.5 billion years ago. It was born only about 300 million years after the beginning of the universe. Its diameter was about 1,600 light years. Since the Milky Way has a diameter of 100,000 light years, this galaxy was quite small. In the early universe, many small galaxies like this were born. At that time, the universe was smaller than it is today, and galaxies were much closer together. Therefore, galaxies were strongly attracted to one another by gravity and frequently collided. In fact, some studies suggest that more than 10% of all galaxies experienced collisions within the first 3 billion years after the birth of the universe. So, what actually happens when galaxies collide? Here, we see two spiral galaxies, 450 million light years from Earth, in the process of colliding. Similarly, this is another galaxy, 300 million light years from Earth. As you can see, when galaxies collide, their shapes become severely distorted. But what about the stars and planets inside them? When galaxies are stirred up, do stars and planets smash into one another and shatter? The answer depends on the density of the galaxy. The densest part of a galaxy is its center. There, the average distance between stars is about 0.03 light years. 
If we move outward to the region around the solar system, the average distance between stars is about 3 light years. To give you an idea of this density, it is like having two apples floating in the Pacific Ocean. In other words, even if another galaxy collided with the Milky Way, the probability of celestial bodies actually colliding with one another is about the same as the chance of two apples bumping into each other while floating in the Pacific Ocean. In this way, even when galaxies collide, the effects on stars and planets are minimal. On the other hand, there is something that is greatly affected. Interstellar gas. Interstellar gas is a thin gas that spreads throughout the galaxy. Let's take a look at it. If we remove the stars and other celestial objects, almost everything left in the image is interstellar gas, and the amount is far greater than one might imagine. When galaxies collide, this gas is compressed. As a result, balance is lost, gravitational collapse occurs, and large numbers of new stars are born. Considering the process of the universe's birth and galaxy formation, the Milky Way must have begun as a small galaxy, collided many times, and eventually evolved into its present form. If repeated collisions occurred, then traces of those events should remain throughout the Milky Way. However, finding those traces is difficult. For example, here we see two galaxies of roughly equal mass colliding. The galaxies crash violently, scattering stars and gas, which then come together again. In the process, almost all traces of the original galaxies disappear. In 2013, ESA launched the Gaia Space Telescope. Gaia can precisely observe the brightness, temperature, composition, motion, and position of individual celestial objects. It analyzed the three-dimensional motion of about 7 million stars within the Milky Way. Normally, stars move in the direction of the galaxy's rotation. However, Gaia's observations revealed that about 30,000 stars are moving in a different direction. Why are only some stars moving in this unusual way? It turned out that these were the traces left behind by another galaxy that collided with the Milky Way. That galaxy is called Gaia Enceladus. The collision took place more than 10 billion years ago. Its mass was about one-tenth that of the Milky Way. Gaia Enceladus approached the Milky Way, collided, passed through several times while being torn apart, and was ultimately absorbed. Around 170 globular clusters have been discovered around the Milky Way. Gaia has also observed their motions. The results showed that about 13 globular clusters are moving in the same retrograde pattern as the unusual stars. This means that these globular clusters, now part of the Milky Way, originally belonged to Gaia Enceladus and joined the Milky Way through the collision. Let's take a look at some globular clusters that merged into the Milky Way. M56 NGC 5286 M79 NGC 1851 and one of the most remarkable globular clusters NGC 2808 
It is notable for both its size and its stellar generations. It contains more than 1 million stars, making it one of the most massive globular clusters in the Milky Way. Globular clusters have a mystery regarding their stellar generations. They are usually composed of only one generation of stars. This is because the massive bursts of stars that form simultaneously blow away the gas needed for the next generation, preventing further star formation. However, NGC 2808 contains at least three generations of stars. A globular cluster this massive with multiple stellar generations was very likely once a galaxy itself. In other words, NGC 2808 may be the remnant galactic core, a stripped nucleus that lost its gas and dust to the Milky Way. The Milky Way, shaped by repeated collisions, does not only bear traces of ancient encounters. Even today, it is in the middle of another collision. The galaxy currently colliding with it is the Sagittarius Dwarf Spheroidal Galaxy. It lies about 70,000 light years from Earth, with a diameter of about 10,000 light years, only about one tenth the size of the Milky Way. Gaia has also studied the motion of the Sagittarius Dwarf Spheroidal Galaxy. Observations revealed that between 5.7 and 1 billion years ago, it collided with the Milky Way three times. These collisions stirred up the gas and dust inside the Milky Way, triggering the birth of many stars. This graph shows the number of stars formed over time. It records three distinct peaks, the earliest at 5.7 billion years ago, and these peaks align with the collision times of the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy. The Sun was born about 4.6 billion years ago. It is possible that the solar system itself was formed as a result of one of these collisions. Through three encounters, the Sagittarius Dwarf Spheroidal Galaxy was torn apart, leaving behind long, stream-like structures of stars and gas around the Milky Way. These are called stellar streams. Stellar streams are distributed in a way that surrounds the Milky Way. It has also been discovered that the Milky Way's disk is warped. Here is an illustration. The edges of the disk curve upward and downward. This warp, too, may have been caused by the collision with the Sagittarius Dwarf Spheroidal Galaxy. In the future, within a few hundred million years, the Sagittarius Dwarf Spheroidal Galaxy will collide with the Milky Way once again. The intervals between collisions will grow shorter until eventually the Milky Way absorbs it entirely, becoming an even larger galaxy. Today, AI is being used to analyze the mechanisms of galaxy formation. Researchers trained AI by linking data on galaxies resembling the Milky Way and their surrounding globular clusters with the properties of galaxies more than 10 billion years ago. Based on the training results, they analyzed the Milky Way and its globular clusters to reconstruct past collisions. As the universe cooled and many galaxies formed, the small seed galaxy of the Milky Way was also born. The Milky Way absorbed five relatively large galaxies and at least 15 smaller ones, evolving into its present form. Even now, collisions continue. It is about to absorb the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy and billions of years from now, it is destined to collide with the Andromeda Galaxy. When viewed across vast timescales, we may realize that today's universe is, just like in the distant past, a turbulent era of galactic mergers and absorptions, and that we are living right in the middle of it.